I may be poor, but I am somebody. I may be on welfare, but I am somebody. I may be in jail, but I am somebody. I may be uneducated, but I am somebody. Don't let anybody make you feel that you are nobody. You are somebody, you have dignity, you have worth. Don't be ashamed of yourself. Morrow, 25 minutes out from Atlanta. A place where Corey did not see paradise, but at the very least, it was a fresh start. From a small country town to the outskirts of the inner city, he was in a different territory. A different world, almost. Nevertheless, it was time to discover something new. Going off to college was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life. Because not only did it allow for me to become my own individual and, and learn how to stand on my own two feet away from home, but it also allowed for me to meet other people and see new things and, and take my skills and my, my passions and my desires to a whole new level in a different area and, and show different people who I am and what I do as opposed to trying to fight for some validation here in this city. And I'm grateful for all the friends that I've made and the times that I've had at Clayton State when I was there during my tenure there. You know, I, I'm grateful for all the projects that I've worked on and projects that I've made myself and you know, the projects that I've helped other people make, I'm, I'm grateful for it all, you know? I'm grateful for everything. And, you know, 2019, I've had the honor and the privilege of directing and writing my own first college short, Scissors. It was a very, very, very significant moving to me because it was the first college short that I made. You know, the first short I've ever made, you know, in my college career. This was freshman year when I was first starting out. Um, it came out around October of, tw of 2019, and this was around the time when we had the Campus Movie Fest, which is um, a festival where they come to your school, they give you all the tools and equipment that you need to make a five-minute video. Five minutes, no more, no less. Five-minute video, just telling a story, and you had a week to shoot it, edit it, and get it submitted. And so Scissors was um, was a part of that movie festival, thankfully, because at my school at the time, my school picked the top 16 shorts out of, I think, over 100 submissions. I think it was about 200 or, or something like that. But it was in the hundreds. And they only picked 16 movies to be um, showcased in the festival, in the auditorium that, you know, we typically showcase our films in, you know, for that school. The film department usually uses that auditorium for it. So my film was luckily one of the 16 that got selected. Angel! Angel, open up, please! Get the fuck away from my door, Troy! Just, let me, let me talk to you for a minute. Just, let me help you. 
and man, just working with, you know, so talented people, you know, just having a remarkable moment, you know, just having that moment to kind of grow, not only as a storyteller, but as a team player. And I'm just thinking the whole time, like, man, I wish Hinesville had this stuff. You know, I wish, I wish we had programs like this coming up, you know? And I just felt like I found my people. You know, I found people who had ambitions like me, who wanted the same thing. Maybe wanted the same thing in different ways, of course, because, you know, we've all brought different skill sets to the table to make a movie, because, you know, it takes a village to make a film. But I was just happy to see that there were there were other people like me and we're all coming together to make a project and more projects to come, you know? It, it just made me feel like, okay, I'm in the right place. I'm glad I made the move here. You know, I'm not alone. Because being in Hinesville, sometimes it feels like you're alone. It feels like you don't have anybody here besides your family, of course. And, you know, that one friend I was talking about. But other than that, you're alone. Because, you know, most of the people that you, you, you knew from high school, you, you're not really connected with them anymore and vice versa as you used to be. And so it just feels like you're on your own personal journey. And so when I went off to college, you know, it opened my eyes and, and it allowed for me to see the world for myself and see people for myself. Corey's views of the world had long shifted since being out of high school. In the past, his films and projects often reflected core themes centered around peace, love, hope, and positivity. They were family-friendly projects that reflected what he hoped for in everyone. You said it! It is truly an honor to spend Christmas with all of you. Yes. I've never had a real family before. This seems real to me. Hey. We're always here for you on this side of the woods. You know, we can all come together and be a real family and love each other. Remembering his past really experiences are. in school, yeah. he realized that the world was not all sunshine and rainbows and that people will always be people. It was time for him to mature and so were his films. His goals became more personal, more brutal. His main focus now was to use his talents to speak truth and expose the world for what it actually is and not what he wanted it to be. My ambitions and my, my, my content creation became more of a personal journey rather than just trying to use it to unify an entire building full of people who were fighting and blah, blah, blah. You know, Clayton State was a very stark contrast from Bradwell Institute, I can tell you that right now. I mean, there was still some ratchetness going on, but it wasn't like to the point where you saw people fighting physically. And if they did fight, they would fight like in the dorm rooms or, you know, off campus or whatever. But yeah, once I got to Clayton State, it was just like, okay, I'm here to grow and elevate. All that stuff I did in Hinesville, I'm leaving that in the past because it doesn't matter anymore. You know, all that stuff I did at Bradwell, it doesn't matter anymore. I just want to crumble it up, throw it into the shredder. No, wait, that didn't make sense. <laughs> crumble it up, toss it in the trash, and throw it into the furnace. You know, because I just, it, it just didn't matter, you know. I want to elevate, I want to move on. You know, I don't want to be stagnant in one place, you know. I don't want to be stuck in one place. I want to elevate. I want to progress. You know, I'm all about character development. You know, I feel like when it's time to move on from something, it's time to move on. You know, the only person who would be keeping yourself in that same position is, is you. You have to put in the work and, and put in the time and the effort to make something of yourself or your future. And that's why I thought, you know, college was the best way for me to do that. And, and I've always wanted to go to college, you know, it, it's not like, oh, I was just using a college as an, you know, 
as an excuse to, to, to leave or, you know, whatever. I mean, part of it, yes, but I really wanted to study the craft of filmmaking and I really wanted to elevate myself even further and, and learn from real people who have done this before, you know? Because when I was here at home, I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't. I just, I just took my smartphone, like my iPhone, put it on a tripod and I just started shooting stuff, you know? And that's how most of these filmmakers, they'll tell you, just pull out your camera and start shooting. You know, that's, that's how you start out. You know, just point at something and shoot it. Anybody can be a filmmaker. Shoot, you got filmmakers all the time on social media, you know? I mean, content creators, they, they make content, you know? Your camera is a, I mean, your phone is a camera, you know? So we all technically have some aspect of filmmaking within our lives, if you think about it. You know, you don't have to be this super professional um, Martin Scorsese or, you know, Roger Deakins, who is a phenomenal cinematographer, you know? We don't all have to be professionals. You know, we can just tell our own stories whenever we want to. There's a director inside of all of us. There's a producer inside of all of us, you know? We carry our phones every day we broadcast our lives every day that's telling a story in it itself and so you know that's what I wanted to do tell my story in a different place and offer it to different people and sharing his stories in a new place he did it was his time to learn his time to grow and his time to shine Corey knew that simply being in a new place would not suffice. He had to go out and network, seek the knowledge and connections for himself. He knew that if he ever wanted to elevate, he had to put in the work. He didn't study film to be good. He studied to be great. And he wanted to be great with great people. And no one or anything was going to stop him. Six people have died in an outbreak of the new coronavirus, which has now reached the United States. I am officially declaring a national emergency. There are now more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Waltham and Melrose are the latest, though, of dozens of school districts to close for at least two weeks. And as WBZ's Lisa Greshi shows us, parents are now scrambling to make plans for their children. Fast-breaking developments in the coronavirus emergency in the U.S. and around the world. The number of cases soaring just today, more than 24,000 now nationwide. This is a projection, about 100,000 to 200,000 and we think that that is the range. We really believe and hope every day that we can do a lot better than that. There is a new coronavirus variant that is causing more new COVID cases across the country than any other variant, according to the CDC. There it was, a deadly, abominable, despicable threat that plagued the entire world. Just when Corey thought his world was expanding, it soon, began to collapse. Everything that he had built upon during his freshman year of college was now completely threatened. This was the first serious threat he had ever faced in his entire life. The one chance he had to make a better life for himself by doing what he loved was now threatened by an unexpected enemy, COVID-19. It's hard to believe it's been four years already. Yeah, that was a, that was an extremely excruciating time, very traumatic time to live through. 
you know, it. I've never been through a pandemic. You know what I'm saying? I've never been through a global catastrophe like that. You know, COVID, like back then, you know, I didn't know what COVID was. So when they basically said that, oh, well, the schools are, are going to shut down for two weeks, because that's, what, that's how it started. Shut down for two weeks. And then from two weeks, it went from that to the rest of the semester. So, you know, I come home from spring break in March of 2020. I'm thinking, all right, I'm staying home for a week and I'm going back to school. The day before I was supposed to go back, right? It was a Thursday. I was going to go back on a Friday. I'm packing up my stuff in my car. My mom tells me to come inside, watch the news. And I find out that, you know, President Trump at the time, um, he issued a national emergency because the pandemic was breaking out, COVID. And so I get an email from my school, my school email at the time, they tell me, oh, well, students can't return back to school for like two weeks. And I'm like, two weeks, what? Like, wh what's going on? Like, I'm looking at, I'm reading about that. It's saying it's a, it's a COVID related issue. And then I'm watching the news and they're saying it's a COVID related issue. So I'm like, oh, snap. I hope this virus doesn't spread. I hope it doesn't get worse. And then, you know, two weeks went by. I was very optimistic. I was very optimistic. I wanted to go back so bad, but they said, no, we're going to spend the rest of our semester at home, locked in our rooms, isolated from everybody else. And upon hearing those words, my heart just dropped. Lost, confused, distraught. Corey began to feel lonely once again. Away from his new friends and away from school, thousands of people like him began to worry. The whole world stood still in isolation as this new threat initiated its conquest. Nowhere to go, nowhere to run. Everyone felt hopeless imprisoned in their own homes. As Corey put it, it felt like a Disney princess being locked away in the tower. I've invested so much time in leaving my city behind, taking my craft with me, hoping to elevate myself, go beyond great measures, and move on with my life. But you mean to tell me I can't even do that? You know, I was just, I was morbid, I was livid, I was upset, I was depressed. I, I just felt like the whole world was just attacking me. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people felt that way too. Because I had big plans in 2020. Me and my friends, you know, from college, we were supposed to work on the short upon returning from our spring break. But we couldn't do that because of COVID. And then they had a study abroad program, right, at the time. Where I think it was like the film department they had a program to where you could go to South Korea and study film documentary and, and make a documentary out there, document your, your time traveling. And at the time I was a freshman still, because this was spring of 2020. Um, so I wasn't able to do it, but I was hoping that, you know, my junior year or in my upperclassmen years, I would be able to do it, you know, start saving money and go study abroad. Like, like my cousin did when he was in college one time. But no, I, I couldn't do that. I didn't get those opportunities. And so college for me, just it just became this sort of battleground between, okay, thriving out of Hinesville, you know, staying optimistic, keep on doing what I'm doing, but at the same time, accepting the fact that the industry that I'm trying to get into is being threatened. And... I don't know what the next steps are going to be. I don't I don't know what the aftermath is going to be, you know? And COVID was such a big deal to the point where production started shutting down. Stores started closing down. Like, I, I remember stores became bankrupt because of the pandemic. The pandemic has ruined so many lives and has changed the way we 
live our lives forever. You know, we don't live the same way as we did in pre-pandemic. You know what I'm saying? During the pre-pandemic era, era, excuse me, times were a lot simpler. You know, we didn't have to stand six feet apart. We didn't have to wear a mask every day. We didn't have all these glass doors, you know, barricading around us, you know, just to keep germs from spreading. But 2020 just kind of changed all of that forever. I mean, now it's kind of toned down a little bit, but still it's like all that time we, we lost because of the pandemic, we can't get that time back. We can't go back and relive it. You know, I can't go back to college and do some of the stuff that I've always wanted to do. Like, I didn't get to have the full experience like other people had, you know, when they were in college before the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a good time in college, but I wish I would have had a great time. You know what I mean? I wish I would have had a better time than what I had. I'm still grateful for the things that I've accomplished, but I just felt like I didn't really get to have that full experience that I wanted because of the pandemic. And it saddened me. It made me feel like that the world was gonna end. I don't know, I just, I, I, I never felt so low in my life, ever. I never felt so scared and afraid of the future. Because this wasn't a, an issue, this wasn't an issue that was just affecting me. This was affecting the whole world, like the globe. We were all affected by this. And so it made me fearful for everybody. Like it made me feel like, okay, what are the next steps? Where do we go from here? How is life going to be after this catastrophe? How is, how is my future career going to work after this catastrophe? And yeah, I was beaten. I was frozen. I just didn't know where to go. Corey's mind began to go crazy. Just as the quality of his projects was starting to improve by being in college, his world had begun shattering. Depressed, disappointed, and discouraged by recent events, he began to pour down his feelings into his work and the quality showed. It was as if he had been demoted to a lower rank. He was back to his humble beginnings, back to his old stepping grounds. You know, during the COVID era, um, around this time, I'm back in college now. You know, it's fall of 2020. I'm sitting in my dorm room or my apartment room, and I'm just, I'm just suffering from this creative depression because I don't know what the next steps are. I don't know how we're going to heal from this as, as a planet. How are we going to heal from this global catastrophe? That's taken over our lives. And so that kind of had an effect on my work. And so everything that happened in late 2019, you know, my freshman year, the, the first half of my freshman year, I thought I was progressing. You know, I thought I was getting better. I thought I was taking my craft to a whole nother level because I had shifted from trying to unite people in my local community to trying to showcase myself in a different community 
And so it felt like I was going back to square one again. You know, I was going down a creative slope and it had an effect on my work because I made this short called Mirage. Um, it was a pandemic short. You can tell it was a pandemic short because I couldn't use other people to help me film it because COVID was a big deal at the time. So I filmed it in my college dorm, you know, by myself, you know, it was a movie that was supposed to talk about uh, depression and how we kind of face our inner demons and face ourselves um, in a sense that, you know, it holds us back. So I played this character who kind of sees himself, um, you know, as a mirage or, or, you know, as this sort of figure who is identical to him. And he's, he's battling things internally. And I kind of wanted to use that film as a way to express my, my emotions at the time. Stop! You're not even worth the killing anymore. You're right. I'm not like you. Because I am better. And I will continue to be better. And I guess you're just going to have to suffer for the rest of your life. If you want to run away from your own problems, you continue to do that. But I'm done. We are through. So the real pussy here, the real sourpuss, is you. Goodbye. Get back here and face me, you motherfucker! I was very depressed. I was very depressed at how the world was. And I was very depressed to know the fact that this industry that I am trying so hard to get myself in is in danger, you know? Because when you're on set, there are hundreds of people on set with you. Hundreds. On a, on a professional set, at least. You know? Everybody's working hand in hand, arm in arm, to get this film made. And so I thought that, okay, well, since we're in this global catastrophe, I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, I hope it doesn't last this long because I, I really want to succeed and thrive in the industry. But where's the future going to bring? Like, what's going to happen? Like, am I made for this? Or is this, is this a way of being told to me that, you know, maybe it's time to move on? I don't know. I just got so scared and so worried. I, you know, being in my room, all my classes were online. And I hate online classes. I, I'd rather be in the classroom physically around different people and with the teacher so that way I can learn better. And so I just felt isolated. I felt alone. I've, I've, I felt alone to the point where, I don't know, I felt like, I felt trapped, you know? And it made me feel powerless. Despite the odds against him, Corey did everything in his power to stay positive by continuing to do what he always loved, filming content. He did everything in his power to escape the harsh realities of the world, and his passion was his coping mechanism. At this point, it was all about survival for him, and he was not going to let this catastrophe bring him down and deprive him of what he wanted for himself. Yeah. It was time for him to fight back. Oh, you saw that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Ah, okay. All right. Oops. <laughs> that was not supposed to happen.
we took a chance as a school and as a film department and you know we started doing some in-person classes but we all wore masks and you know we all separated you know at our desks and tables and stuff and so i was able to you know work with other amazing people you know and make two more shorts that year uh, the man in black which was a western and i see you which is regarded as one of my um, best shorts and um, I was so lucky and just so blessed and so humbling to be able to re-enter a space that I felt like I was being left out of all because of a global catastrophe and you know I'm, I'm glad to have had the honor and the privilege to you know work on those shorts within those years at the times when they were made despite the you know hardships and the stakes that were being raised at the time With his past films in his earlier days, Corey has had many failures in the festival circuit, more no's than yeses. But thanks to new skills he had learned along with his fellow friends and colleagues, they were able to shine bright in many film festivals, securing many finalist spots and even wins. For the first time ever, Corey felt that eyes were finally watching him, and they wanted more from him. His quality had improved, his merit of ideas kept growing. He was energized and motivated once again. 2020 may have been a depressing year for him and many others, but 2021 was his winning season, and he wanted everyone to know about it. He was going to make sure that everyone knew exactly who he was and what he was all about. And even with all the doubters and people who looked down on him in his past, he wanted to prove them all wrong. His stage name may have been The Jokester, but no longer did he want to be seen as The Joke. Sorry. Sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Slow down. Well, I know you don't know me, but I know you. What? It's, it's Angel. Wait, what? She's locked up in her room. What? And I hear noises in me. What noises? Like sharp objects clicking together. Come on, we gotta go. after Scissors premiered, um, I was very grateful and fortunate to have it be portrayed in the Black Film Fest Atlanta, which is an amazing, phenomenal film festival where all these Black creators from the area or from other areas, for that matter, they come together and they showcase their work. You know, we're all just in this one big space, we're rooting for one another, we're happy for one another. And it just gave me so much love and, and joy to see other people like me 
see my work on a big screen in a theater, in an actual theater. Um, my first year in the festival, they showed the movie at the AMC Camp Creek, which is right there in Atlanta. Um, not far from the school, actually, that I went to. But, but yeah, it was just so comforting to see different black creators in one space. You know, we're all not fighting. We're all not shouting. We're, we're acting professional. We're, you know, we're carrying ourselves a certain way. And we're all rooting for one another. You know, we're, we want everybody to win. And it was just so comforting to see that and refreshing. And it was just something that I just didn't receive here in, in my town. And, you know, when I was there, it just made me go back in my mind again and say, man, I wish we had this stuff in Hinesville. Like, I, I feel like I'm on a different vibe here, you know? It, it just, I just felt the love and the joy and, and, and the comfort that I received from that moment. And then the next year, um, I was fortunate to make Poison So, where the fuck have you been? You don't hear me talking to you? I, I was hanging with the f fellas. You sure? You wasn't out there letting some other bitch go down on you? <laughs> Come on. You know I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I love you. No? <laughs> you better do whatever I tell you. No. Drop your pants, Darnell. No. I consider that as a sister film to uh, scissors. So Poison came out in 2022. I'm, I'm very amazed and, and ecstatic about the success that came with that short film. And once again, working with most of the same people that helped me with my other um, shorts, most of them, you know, they helped me again. And this time we just elevated it even further. So not only did we get featured in the Black Film Festival, again but this time it was shown in the regal atlantic station which is one of the one of the biggest theaters i believe in america or something like that correct me if i'm wrong i i don't think i don't know that's what i was told but I, i'll have to look that up but but yeah one of the most popular theaters in atlanta i'll say that you know just just to be safe one of the most popular theaters in America and Atlanta. So I was fortunate to see my work on a big IMAX screen. You know, just see that happen. And it played for two two days out the weekend. It played on the Saturday and the Sunday. We all dressed up and we came together for that. No? You better do whatever I tell you. No. Drop your pants, Darnell. No. 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 Poison was one of the darkest films Corey has ever made, with subject matters going a lot deeper than he had ever expressed. Why the fuck do y'all care? Unlike his older films, in which Corey made to inspire, Poison was a film made to express how dark and cold-blooded people in the world can be. A world where we look at one side of a coin, but not the other. He didn't want people to just simply be motivated. He wanted people to sit and think. Ever since Scissors, his projects have become more and more mature and less family-friendly. With him stating that not only is he getting older, 
but his audience is as well. And that his audience is maturing and so should his films. He was now dealing with characters trying to expose their harsh realities for what they were rather than trying to make the most of it, which in a way paralleled his own feelings about the real world. It wasn't actually my idea single-handedly. Um, about two years ago, before the pandemic started, um, me and some of my friends here, we actually sat down and we were thinking about making a story involving a man being abused by a woman, but that film was kind of a little bit more, uh, was a little bit different than what you saw on the screen. That story was gonna deal with a man being in a hospital and subconsciously in his mind, because he was gonna be in a coma, um, subconsciously that was gonna be a metaphor for him to kind of break free from his relationship. But this story here, I just kind of felt like, you know, I didn't want to leave that idea on the back burner because I thought it would kind of still be relevant today to kind of bring up a topic that's not really talked about much. You know, most times we hear about the man being the abuser, but we don't really flip the other side of that coin and, you know, look at it from a different perspective. So, yeah. It also got featured in a book, in a published book, and it... This published book, it, it showcased a lot of short films from around the globe, not just in America, but around the world. And I, I'm very blessed and fortunate that our student film was able to make it into a popularized published book. And and so 2022 was that year that, I don't know, I, I kind of got my groove back a little bit and it kind of helped me tone down my fears of you know, what's going to happen with this pandemic, you know, as things were slowly getting back to the, the groove of things and, you know, we're trying to find our footing again, you know, it was able to motivate me to keep pushing. And so I'm glad that Poison and the people behind it helped me with that. And yeah, we did some amazing things with that one. Poison was the one. It was the one that helped him hit his peak in his college career. Not only was it his second time that a film of his hit the big screen, but he was finally getting the respect he longed for as a filmmaker. And he was willing to share his success with those who helped him along the way. These were moments he would never forget. He was confident, he was brazen, he was ready to keep the momentum going and show Atlanta that he was not just another southern small town boy, but a man with big dreams and big potential. Little did he know, however, that dream would take a while to achieve. Graduation a topic that some are elated to speak on, but for others, very nervous and afraid. Corey's biggest fear was the unknown. He had come so far in his college career to prove his capabilities and use his potential for the greater good. And he knew that once he had received his degree, playtime would be over. College to him felt like a purgatory. In his own words, it was like waiting in the waiting room at the doctor's office for your lab results to see if anything fatal would be mentioned pertaining to your life and health. Corey Ramon Davis, summa cum laude. Olua Bukunmi. You know, graduating from college was kind of a hard reality that I had to accept. It, it was a hard thing to grasp because the one thing that I really wanted to do the most was make a mark on my institution. I wanted to kind of build a legacy and, and leave it behind, you know, for younger generations to come behind and, and showcase their own work. and you know, showcase their own talents. 
And so saying goodbye to the foundation that I've built at this particular institution, it was, it was very hard to grasp because um, for the longest time, I felt like I found my second home. I found my community. And, you know, going through the last phase of my college career was very hard because I'm, I consider myself a futurist, so I kind of, I think about the future a lot, and a lot of people don't know this about me. I spend more time in the future than I spend in the past. Like, I, a lot of people would say, oh, well, you know, you're so stuck in the past. No, for me, it's the opposite. I'm stuck in the future. But I'm trying to tone myself down a little bit and be in the present because I don't want to miss out on certain things that are happening now because I'm, I'm busy worrying about what's going to happen later or where's my life going to go later. And it, it, and you know, it just got to a point where I just got scared. You know, that, that, that fear was coming back once again, you know, I had already gotten over my fear of the pandemic, but now the fear of the future, the idea that I have to find work for myself and make something of myself. I can't rely on the school anymore. It, it was kind of hard to grasp, you know, because I had set my mark here. I had I had shared my gifts to many people and I have met my people here. And so I didn't know where the next steps were. And so after I graduated from college in December of 2022, you know, I made my first post-college short, my first non-student film outside of college using the skills that I've learned. And that was called The Test. And it had my brother in it. And I was very fortunate for the success that that film had. It went on to go back into the Black Film Fest of Atlanta and it got showcased again at the Regal Atlantic Station uh, Theater um, September of 2023. So I was very fortunate and blessed to be back in the midst of, um, of that festival. But, you know, I, I wanted to make a film where it could showcase my talent and all the things that I've learned while I was in school. I wanted to test myself. I wanted to test my knowledge and, and, and test my limits. That's why I called it the test. And that was also a film that kind of helped me cope with my post-college depression or post-graduate depression, as they call it. Because after graduation, uh, it got rough. Application after application, Eno after Eno, Corey was denied and ignored at every turn. Once again, he was discouraged. He tried to keep his head up high, but the fight was hard. After all he had been through throughout his college career, his mind was filled with false hope hoping to get a fresh start post-graduation, hoping to be on his own, hoping to maintain a successful career doing what he always wanted to do. As someone who always used his gifts to escape the harsh realities of the world, he had no choice but to accept whatever fate collided to him in his life. Looking for jobs in my field, being denied left and right. You know, you're hoping and praying someone will call you back or email you back, but they don't, you know, I've always been ghosted. So you're just like, man, like, what am I doing? Like, am I not doing enough? Like, what... What am I doing with myself, you know? And I just felt lost. I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. I felt like all the work that I've put in, you know, at this point, this was back in like 2022, late 2022. So at this point, I was eight years into my um, content creation um, filmmaking career. So eight years had gone by since I started all of this. And I just felt like, man, for the past eight years, I've been building up to this moment, and now I'm being told no. I'm being told that, you know, what I'm doing it technically isn't good enough. And so I just 
felt this sadness in my mind and it, it made me feel a certain way. But I didn't give up, you know, I, I, I kept going, I kept being optimistic, you know, I, I kept pushing and, and running and doing all these different things and, you know, did some freelance work for this mayor in a nearby city. And I also helped um, this man, he's a great man in my community. Uh, he cares a lot about the students here. Um, I helped him with his campaign video to run for city council and uh, he ended up winning that position. And so I just tried different things to keep myself afloat. And um, I didn't really get too far with the freelancing because a lot of clients that I tried to work with weren't really serious. So the inquiries weren't really that serious. So I just kind of, I haven't abandoned it, but I, I just had to come to a realization that I need something, you know. I, I can't keep myself stagnant here forever. And I knew coming back here at Hinesville would be a pain, but at least I had supportive family members and different people in my life who I could depend on and, you know, who are very loving and very caring and very supportive and want to see me do the, you know, the best that I can. And, you know, they always make me feel like I have a home to come back to in case I need to. So I'm, I'm very grateful to have them in my life still to this day. You know, even as an adult, they're still there for me, you know, and I, I am very blessed and I thank God for them each and every day. Every day. Accepting the fact that it would take a while for him to settle into the life and career that he always wanted, Corey used his skills to give back to his community and to also show that his skills have improved over time since his middle school, high school days. Despite coming from a small town and not having much to work with, he was going to have to make do with what he had. It was no longer about filming content just to be filming. He wanted to make art, not content. He knew his worth, and it was time to brand himself in the way that people understood that he was a filmmaker, not a content creator. There was no more schooling left to teach him, no more schooling left to help him. It was time for him to go fully independent. In addition, he was finally able to find others in his town who were like him. Created people who all had many unique styles and aesthetics that made them them. definitely a lot of talent out here in Hinesville. My name is Davi, for those of you who don't know me, but at the moment, I'm here for my Bring Your Love show, which is not a crazy turnout at the moment, being that I'm about 20 minutes in, and all of the people that said they're gonna show up still haven't showed up yet, besties included. So it's a crazy feeling being like an underdog in your hometown city, especially when it's like other artists that come through the town and they're making like really average music. Not hating on them because that's their grind, but don't even care about the music for real, but they come through town and everybody just goes crazy for them and drive all the way out the way 
But I got so much blood and family out here in Hinesville and they're not trying to pull up or go crazy. Which a lot of it is nobody wants to support you until you're on top and making all the big bags and you can help them out. So I get it a little bit, but definitely a character building type of vibe to have, be in this area where music's not really too crazy love or like really promoted out here. You gotta be like somebody business savvy to really be talked about and bragged about out here, but that's not what matters too much because your hometown is just somewhere you're supposed to leave at some point. So whenever I do blow up, I know it's gonna be a whole lot of love out here from Hinesville Development because y'all know that we talked and y'all was hating on the low. But I know it's gonna be a whole lot of you want me to come back to the town and do shows and all that. So we're gonna talk about it eventually, but for now it's just putting in that work to make it happen. If there's one thing that I've learned about about being on this journey is that it is a dark, scary, lonely journey. No matter what you do in life, you know, it doesn't even have to be what I do. It can be anything, whether it be moving to a new city, you know, being your own person, starting your own family, you know, doing your own thing in your own life. You know, accomplishing anything like getting a new promotion at your job or finding a new job or, you know, whatever. It is going to be a dark, lonely, scary road that you have to travel on by yourself. You can't expect everybody to pat you on the back or, or say, Oh, hoorah! Like you did it, man! Good job! Congratulations! Because you're just, you're not going to get that from everybody, unfortunately. And as much as you post on social media about your accomplishments and your achievements not everyone's going to root for you not everyone's going to like it and you have to understand that at the end of the day it's not about what they like it's not about what you're trying to seek for them because let me tell you something man social media is a very bias it is a very superficial environment and it can be real toxic at times and it took me a while to understand this. It took me a while to understand that there, there's a lot of fakery on these apps, man. There are a lot of fakery here. People are not going to always be who they say they are. People are not going to always root for you. People are not going to always see what you see. But at the end of the day, it's not about how they feel. It's about how you feel about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to post because it's what you enjoy or it's something that you want to get off your chest. It's not about what they think or, or how they feel or, you know, it's not about that. What does it mean to you? And so whenever you're accomplishing anything out of life, I want you to know that, you know, it may feel like people are on your side. It may feel like, you know, you got the whole world in your hands, but you don't. And that's okay. You're not supposed to have the whole world in your hands. You're supposed to have your own world in your hands. You know, you got to worry about you. And, and I feel like I don't regret anything that I've done over the years, especially in high school. I don't regret any of the stuff that, you know, I did to, to help or try to unify people using my gifts and my craft. But if there's one thing I regret... I regret not taking care of myself as well. 
I was so busy trying to be a Superman and, you know, take care of other people and, you know, try to make the school or try to make my community a better place. But I forgot to take care of me inside. And so I put all those burdens on my shoulders and it's my fault. I, I, I take full responsibility for that. But now that I'm older and I'm wiser, you know, I'm, I'm on a more selfish personal journey. And I feel like you guys should be on that journey too. You know, do it for you. At the end of the day, you're all that you have on this earth. You know, I know that's very harsh for me to say that, but life is a very scary, lonely road and we are all gonna have to travel it on our own. We're all gonna die one day. We're all gonna die at different times. That's why I say it's lonely because we're not gonna go away together, you know? As Martin Luther King Jr. said, I may not get there when you get there, but, at, but hopefully someday we can all reach the promised land or the mountaintop that we've always been dreaming about reaching. And I hope that, you know, I hope we all make it to do what we want to do in life. I really do. And I hope that at some point it'll all pay off. And I'm at the point in my life where, you know, I, I don't need any validation anymore. I don't care about whether people like me or, or whether they get me or understand me or not. You know, I've spent too much time battling that already. It, 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 it's time to ask myself, what do I like? Do I love me? Do I like me? Do I accept me? Like, am I doing this for me? I owe it to myself. I've, I've worked too hard and I've worked too long to get to this point for 10 years just for me to turn back and be like, ah, oh, well, I didn't do it because this person said I wasn't going to do it or... You know, they didn't believe in me. No, no. I didn't get my degree for nothing. I didn't put 10 years of my time and energy into this for nothing. It's going to be for something, whether people want that or not. It's not about what they want. It's about what I want. And that's something that I had to learn from myself. It's all about what I want as an individual. So all you people out there, you know, who don't want to see me win or, you know, don't want to see any success from anybody else or, you know, you don't get me, you don't understand me, you know, you don't understand what it is that I'm doing or why I'm doing or why, I'm, why I am the way that I am, then that's okay. I accept it. You know, I'm not angry at you. You can't please everybody in this world. But what I can do is make myself happy. And that's what I'm going to continue to do, doing what I love, doing what you see me doing right now, filming. You know, that's all I got. That's all I know. You think I'm going to let somebody throw that away for me? No. So, yeah. If you don't know, now you know. I'm Corey Davis, a.k.a. Corey the Jokester. If you didn't know me then, you better know me now. Because I'm coming up. And I'm not stopping for anybody. It's up from here.
Change the World is his motto, and it's a little, uh, it's a little hollow, it's a little grandiose. Ta -da! Hey there, folks. This is me, your boy, D Jokester, and we are here for a brand new special episode of Broken Joking. Angel! Angel! Open up! Please! I'm done telling jokes. I'm retiring from comedy. I'm done with jokes. Just and all those talent shows I entered. Yeah, I just don't have what it takes. I'm just gonna face the facts. I'm not funny. I'm not funny at all. I tried to show them that you can overcome that enemy by being positive. I promise you, if you stick as one, we will achieve as one. Look at me when I'm talking to you! Corey, come here! Oh! Come on, boy. Oh! We are. We. Back it up, back it up, back it up, back. Stop. Stop. Roar close. Like Corey's roar screaming in your ear. Roar! <laughs> and you're just 